Wander Wealthy Podcast, episode 274. Welcome back, y'all, to another episode of the Wander Wealthy Podcast. My name is Tess Wicks. If you're brand new here, I'm a financial coach turned business coach for my fellow money coaches out there in the world. Whether you're brand new to the industry or you've been doing this work for a while, this is the place for you. We talk all things money coaching, how to build a thriving business, how to be an amazing coach, and everything in between. This week's episode, I'm really excited about because it's an episode that answers a question that a lot of coaches have even before they really start getting a lot of clients. And, you know, those are the the questions or this question in particular is one where I'm like, don't worry, we got to walk before we run. But I know that it can sometimes be one of those things that keep us stuck just because we don't know the answer. On the other hand, if you are a seasoned coach, you might really need to know the answer to this question. And the question is how to manage more clients in your growing money coaching business. So either your your coaching business is growing and you're like desperately in need of some help with how to manage all the clients you're working with now, or this is a question that you have because you're trying to really plan your way to success, which if that's the case, take my advice. Don't skip over the start line and think about like, what do you need to do right now to just get that first client or those first handful of clients and then come back and listen to this. But obviously you can listen to it now and just kind of get some peace of mind that it is possible to manage many clients at once and you can totally grow a thriving business even if you're just offering one-on-one coaching that hits your financial goals and allows you to be an effective coach. So we're going to dive into that. But before we do, I have an exciting announcement to make, which is that the Coaching Framework Builder is launched. I have been teasing this sort of all summer in my emails and a little bit here on the podcast, and I am just so excited to have this available to all of you who are really looking to up-level your coaching business or even get started in the world of money coaching and might really be stuck around the question of like, what does money coaching even look like? What am I allowed to do? How do I create something that I can actually market and sell? And that I feel really confident that it's a you know, a program, a a coaching methodology, if you will, that's going to get results. And so all of those questions are answered in this self-managed, sort of self-paced, I guess, like DIY online course that I have put together. I've taken some of my best stuff from the Wealthy Coach Blueprint, which is my signature one-on-one program. I'm not offering at the moment because I'm very close to going on maternity leave. And I've put some of the best stuff when it comes to building an amazing program into this program, the Coaching Framework Builder. So if you have been curious about how in the world you could possibly develop your own financial coaching framework, methodology, system, this program is going to walk you through it. And it is, you know, approximately five weeks. And I pace it out a certain way, but it's also somewhat self-paced because you're going to get lifetime access. You can take your time if you need to, but it is like the reality is you could have a program put together and ready to go in five weeks, even less depending on just the time it takes you to get through the program. And it's a game changer when it comes to your business. It's going to create an enormously valuable asset for you in your business. And also, I would say, bring you so much confidence as a coach to really know that I can do this and I can help people. And these are my people that I can help. And I now have a solution to bring forward to them. So if this is something that you're like, I got to get my hands on it, head to wanderwealthy.com slash framework. You can check out more of the details about it and sign right up. We have in full payment options, a monthly payment option, and a little bit of a bonus for you. The other thing is, you know, I am not offering one-on-one coaching, but As part of this program, I am offering you the opportunity to post your questions within the 
within the program, um, you can post on the video lessons, all of your questions, and then I will be able to respond to those questions and continue to make the program better and improve upon it, provide mini lessons that are applicable to those who you know have similar questions and could really benefit from things that maybe have gone unanswered. And I'm really excited about this new way of providing support, you know, while being on maternity leave and not really being able to do one-on-one calls or offer the sort of unlimited support that I typically offer in the form of email, WhatsApp, Voxer messaging access. So this is a kind of exciting new form of support that I can offer where you can post your questions in the comment section of each of the video lessons, and then I can get back to you in a timely enough manner. It's probably going to be um, maximum one week turnaround for me. And yeah, I'm just excited to explore that to make sure that you get your questions answered and you feel supported in this program. But you're also able to continue doing this work. Um, I can continue to serve you in that way. And you can continue to build your successful coaching business. So wanderwealthy.com slash framework. If you want more details on the program, listen to last week's episode, episode 273. That'll tell you much more about it. And I'm just overall very excited for this program to have finally been born and come to life. Now back to this episode. How do you manage more clients in your growing money coaching business? I remember this was a big question that I could never quite figure out. And honestly, because I just didn't have the clients at the time when I was really trying to figure out this question. And I think what's really neat about building your own business is if you build it at, you know, a slower rate, which is honestly what happened with me, um, you get to just kind of work with what is working and what isn't working within your business and find the solutions as you go. And that is really magical about building a business in general is, you know, I'm all about that just-in-time learning because sometimes we get so wrapped up on trying to solve a problem that isn't even a problem yet and may never be a problem. Uh, For me, this was never ultimately a problem because I had you know, figured out a way to put some foundational kind of baseline systems in place, I suppose, to really allow myself the capacity to manage many coaching clients at one time. And in my coaching business, you know, I could have anywhere from 10 to 25 clients at a time. And once you get around that 20 mark, I mean, even when you're getting close to that 10 client mark, um, you do start to feel, okay, I have a lot going on and my clients are in very different places and I need to make sure I'm kind of staying on top of this. Um, And so, you know, you do tend to feel like, okay, I need some kind of system or something, some rules and boundaries to put in place to really allow myself to make sure that I can manage my clients. And then obviously, if you do get those systems put in place, then you're capable of managing 20, 30, 40 clients at one time, even if they are on you know, a one-on-one schedule with you. So the very first thing I would recommend to have in your coaching business so that you can manage more clients at once is sort of a non-tangible, if you will. And It's boundaries slash expectations and very clear expectations. This is something I talk about a lot when I'm working with my money coaching clients is helping them. Well, first of all, when we start working together, I set the expectations and the boundaries from the get go. And then I make sure that when we get through the process of, you know, helping them determine, okay, who are my ideal clients? What is my program going to look like? I want to make it very clear when they actually start to build and deliver their program, I always mention, you know, it could be a good idea to include sort of a welcome or onboarding training that also introduces your expectations and boundaries so that you can have that kind of set from the beginning And you don't have to do any like catch up or apologizing or backtracking as you get further into your coaching relationship with your clients. So 
when it comes to expectations and boundaries, this could be, you know, when you are available for client questions, especially if you're offering sort of unlimited client support. This could be um, when they can expect to hear from you, like how long between them submitting a question until you are able to get back to them, you know, setting that expectation. This can be an expectation around what you expect from your clients in terms of, you know, showing up to calls on time or respecting your client sessions so that you reduce the number of cancellations and a lot of the, you know, back end administrative logistical work that can take up a lot of time if you do not have an expectation or boundary or cancellation and policy in place or rebooking policy in place, um, as well as the expectations around maybe getting homework done or staying on top of the program curriculum so that every time you do meet and have a client session, you're on the same page and you're able to you know, stay on track and keep things moving forward. Of course, no one's going to be perfect and no one's going to be able to follow the boundary to a T every single time. But I find that if you're able to introduce your boundaries and set expectations from the get-go, the client is very open to agreeing to that, to understanding that. And then if they're not able to meet that expectation later on in the client relationship, it's usually come with a lot of like, oh, I'm, I'm very sorry, this will not ha- happen again. And they don't, you know, there's no kind of taking advantage of you because you as the coach, you're very much allowed to be flexible and be understanding and be empathetic. Like that's a part of this. But at the same time, we don't want to create a habit out of you know, being okay with letting things slide every single time. So that's why I find setting boundaries and setting your expectations up front is really key to a successful business for you as a coach to actually be able to manage more clients. Because if you don't have, you know, a majority of your clients kind of Uh, drawing outside the lines and kind of getting off track and not doing the work, it's so much harder to like wrangle that in and stay on top of where are my clients all at than, you know, just being able to make a quick training that sets those expectations from the get go. And that's kind of the standard then that we set. Here's the other thing. You're not just going to be a total like, uh, dictator around, these are my expectations, these are my boundaries, and you have to respect them. This is an open and two-way street and respectful relationship that we want to build with our clients because we're all adults here, right? Even if your clients were children. Um, We want to create mutual respect. And so I think it can also be really powerful to, in the, you know, if you do do some kind of front end training or onboarding session where you're putting the boundaries in place and setting those expectations, it's also very fair for you to say, and this is what you can expect from me and then show and share what they can expect because you respect them equally as a client. So you can, you can expect me to show up to our calls on time to have, you know, followed through with the, the work that I, I committed to have done for you before our next training or between the trainings. You can expect me to respond to you within, you know, 48 hours during the between Monday and Friday, Monday through Friday. You know, you can expect X, Y, and Z. And I think that that allows you to then also, you know, showcase that there is mutual respect here. And it's not just like, this is what I expect of you and you get treated poorly because we don't, we don't do that to our clients. So that's number one, boundaries, clear expectations. We also have an entire podcast episode on this. So I will make sure that we link it in the show notes, but if you want to go check it out, it is episode number 232. I share the 12 boundaries I set in my money coaching business. So episode 232, or you can find it at wanderwealthypodcast.com slash podcast slash episode 232. All right. The next thing to have in your coaching business to support a growing client base is going to be a CRM, a client relationship management system. Other people call CRMs like customer relationship management and 
you know, there's different ways to kind of think about what this is. For many people, it's a way to kind of track leads and potential customers, and it can very much serve that purpose. But you can also have one for tracking your current clients. And ultimately, there's tons of different like online softwares that you can get access to, you can pay for to be able to set up your own client relationship management system. I use a free task management software called Asana, and I've just created a template for myself and my clients to help them have this system set up for themselves on this free platform. Um, It's an Asana project that I set up, and then each task is a client profile. I can I call the task within the within the project a client profile. I give it the client's name, and then within that task, I can create subtasks to you know document the client calls that we have, so that within those subtasks, I can take notes. Um, I can add attachments. I can do all the things. Um, Under each client profile, I'm also able to provide, you know, little descriptions of maybe where the client's at when we start working together, certain notes just in general on the client that I want to keep in mind. Um, And I can, in addition to the subtasks representing client sessions or client calls, I can also create subtasks that represent client payments if they're on a payment plan and I want to just keep track that they're making those payments. I'll also create subtasks as reminders for me to check in with clients. And then that subtask, you know, I put a due date on it, I assign it to myself, and it will pop into my overarching Asana calendar that is basically telling me all the tasks that I need to work on. So as a project, right, my my client relationship management is a project. And within that project, there's all these different client profiles. And within each of the client profiles, there are subtasks that get popped up on my calendar. I also have other projects in my Asana task management software, like my podcast, right? Recording this episode right now is a task that is also on my calendar. So You know, today I open my Asana calendar and I look at what I need to get done on this day and it says record episode 274 and then it also says, you know, follow up with client A about a testimonial and check in with client B about, you know, how they're doing and send accountability form to client C or and have a coaching call with client D. And so, I know everything that I need to be doing today for each of my clients because I'm able to sort of pre-book them into my Asana calendar. Now, this requires me to actually use Asana as a full task management platform, even if I didn't need to use like the podcasting project or any of the other projects that I have set up, simply just using it to remind myself of what I need, what needs to be happening with each of my clients on any given day is amazing. And that's really, truly what helps me stay on top of my my client work to make sure that you know I'm showing up for calls, I'm getting prepared for calls, I'm checking in with them, I'm sending them what they need from me and you know nothing no ball gets dropped because like let's be honest. I would love to just like be able to think of each and every one of my clients and go, oh yeah, of course I'm going to check in with this person today. But the truth is like when you get more and more clients, you know, some of the stories can, it's possible for them to blend together. So you need a little bit of a a profile that you can go to, to remind yourself, what is this client's story? Um, Or, you know, where is this client at in relation to my overarching program? Or when am I talking to this client next? And when, how do I remind myself to actually check in with them? Because we're not perfect. And even though we want to be like these amazing, well-rounded human beings that are just constantly thinking of everyone, the more clients you have, this happens naturally. So having a system like a CRM is really, really, really powerful 
the more clients you get. Another thing I wanted to mention, and I should have mentioned this at the top of the episode, is that having more one-on-one clients for a lot of people, they start to think, oh, this is going to be unsustainable. This is not going to work. Like That's why you have to want to do group coaching or create an online course. And it's just not true. And what I realized when I did start getting more clients was at the same time as like I was just kind of figuring it out as I went. I also started to realize that the more clients I got, the easier it was for me to actually manage because I started putting these systems into place and really making sure that I, you know, was setting those clear expectations and boundaries, creating my CRM and getting that finally set up so I could stay on top of all of my clients and the other things I'm going to be sharing with you today. So that's just a little aside is that Oftentimes we get overwhelmed by thinking about our business growing, but the reality is the more it grows and as long as it's at like a consistent speed, then the easier it gets instead of the harder and messier it gets as long as, of course, you put these systems in place. The third thing, so the CRM is super, super powerful. The third thing that I put in place and that I think is just as important is scheduling everything out in your calendar. And sometimes, right, I, I'm i basically controlled as a business person by my Google Calendar and my Asana task management calendar. Google Calendar reminds me of like actual appointments that need to happen, you know, throughout the week and each and every day that I open up my calendar and go, okay, what am I doing today, right? It has those things blocked off. And I often use my calendar for actual appointments that I have with other people. I'll also block my calendar to do time blocking, to make space, to get the tasks in my Asana task management platform done. So, you know, I might have a client call at 4 p.m. today, but I'm also going to reserve the hour between 2 and 3 p.m. to do all of my client check-ins and send out accountability and uh, follow up and do get any scheduling done that maybe fell through the cracks, whatever it is that's like client admin work. And I might block that out and then I would go over to Asana and go, okay, what specific client admin work needs to be accomplished and completed today. So I kind of do a mix of using the two calendars. And then if there's anything that absolutely cannot be dropped that is on my Asana calendar that maybe I scheduled out, you know, a month in advance, like I need to make sure that I'm collecting payment from this person or I need to make sure that I'm sending this person this work, or or maybe it's like prepping for an initial money coaching session that I'm having for someone tomorrow. And today is the day that like I need to get it done and it cannot be dropped. And so it might have been scheduled on my Asana task management platform because it's part of a client profile and part of the subtask within the client profile. And so it just got scheduled onto my Asana calendar. But now I need to make sure I don't forget it. I might go and take it into my Google calendar and create a specific event and block off that specific time to do that client prep work the day before. Then the next day on my Google calendar, I would see the appointment is there. So there are some things that you know, are too important within Asana that I have to pull onto my Google Calendar so that I'm notified, my time is blocked off, and, you know, I have the capacity to get it done. Whereas there's other things where, you know, they're on in Asana, maybe I've blocked off some time to get like that and a handful of other tasks done from Asana. Um, But also there can be some things in Asana that if I don't do it today, I can move it to tomorrow or move it to later in the week and then revisit it then. So I kind of use both and I find that using both, right, really, really helps me because my Google Calendar is really in charge of my schedule My Asana task management calendar has all of the nitty gritty details there and kind of, you know, all the tasks that need to get done beyond what my Google calendar might say, like much more specific details. The other thing that I think is important when it comes to having your schedule and 
basically blocking your time in your calendar and setting, letting those reminders go off. And you don't have to have a Google calendar. You can use whatever uh, digital calendar works for you. I do think digital is wonderful. By the way, I also use paper planning and paper calendars uh, because I'm the type of person that loves to write something down just so I can check it off. So I like the tangibility of that, but I also need the notifications to go off to remind me like, hey, you got a call soon or hey, you have to get this done by the end of today. Um, But the other thing that's really important about a calendar and scheduling is making sure that all of my client calls, right? Getting back to how do we manage all these clients is I'll make sure that I can pre-schedule out if if it makes sense and if it's possible, all of my one-on-one client sessions. So when I'm working with money coaches one-on-one, I'm typically speaking with them once a week for 12 weeks straight. So it makes the most sense for us to sit down and determine, okay, what day and time works the best for us on a weekly basis so that we can just block that time out for them. I can block it out for them. They can have it blocked off and know, you know, every Monday, 4 p.m., Tess and I are speaking. Great. Um, So I will get that locked in and loaded so that that's kind of reserved on the calendar. Nothing can be booked around it. And we always know when we're showing up and how we're getting this done. And then that way, I can kind of base that clients, all of the other tasks that need to be done in relation to that client, knowing that, you know, that Monday 4 p.m. call time, everything needs to be anchored around that. So if I'm meeting weekly, I'm doing that. Usually if I'm meeting bi-weekly, right, every other week, I will also do that. Like I still will pre-book out all of our calls now just on a bi-weekly basis And we'll know, you know, we're meeting same time, same day, just every other week. And that seems to work really easily. We'll pre-book all of those calls. If I'm meeting monthly, it might not be so pre-booked out. So I've had coaching packages and specifically my money coaching offerings are either bi-weekly or they get extended to monthly. And then I do have some continuation plans where we meet quarterly. If we're meeting monthly, we might schedule the next call on the call that we're on today. And that I find works amazingly well because it gives us flexibility to, you know, have a schedule and and have a life and know that, you know, one month in advance, I might or might not be available on that, you know, random Tuesday at 3 p.m. So, what we do is when we wrap up the call that you know we're on today, or if I'm on a sales call or an onboarding call with a client, we'll schedule out our first call, you know, for next month, let's say. Or if it's onboarding, we're probably just scheduling our first call and maybe it'll be next week or in the next two weeks. But then as we're wrapping up that first call, we'll schedule call number two. And as we're wrapping up call number two, we'll schedule number three and so on and so forth. This is really powerful because it gets you and the client to equally commit to a time and date that will work for you sometime in the future. And if that does have to change, it changes, but it typically rarely changes because we can book out one month in advance and that's typically okay. But when you start looking at two, three, six months in advance, it gets harder and harder and they're bound to change anyway. So I prefer to have that kind of flexibility in place, but we can at the very least get one month booked out. So pre-scheduling the entire program or making the clients book their next call on the current call that you're on works wonders when it comes to managing many clients at one time. So you don't have to spend so much time between sessions dealing with the logistical nightmare of getting, you know, on the same schedule and getting something booked. Okay. Number four, the fourth thing you can do to prepare and manage for more clients is have a framework. So if you've been around this podcast in the last few weeks, you'll know that I'm talking all things framework. And obviously, we have the coaching framework builder that is perfectly suited to help you build your own framework. But having a framework is so 
clutch when you're managing many clients. And the reason is because you now have a structure in place that each one of your clients is most likely you know, being guided through and you're typically the one guiding them through that. Now, that doesn't mean that they're all, you know, dealing with the steps or the phases of your framework, however you end up creating it. That doesn't mean that they're experiencing them or dealing with them equally and it's the same, but it still provides some guideposts, some milestones that allows you to keep your clients organized in your head and on paper in your digital customer relationship management system, client relationship management system. And you're also very, it's very clear for you to know exactly what the next step is for each of your clients. What this allows you to do, aside from, okay, now your clients can orient to where they're at in terms of your entire program, you can easily orient where they're at in terms of the entirety of your program. You know exactly what's coming next, but this also makes the actual offline coaching work so much more efficient because it reduces all the prep time that you may have experienced if you have been coaching it reduces that prep time of like what you're going to cover and what you need to cover in the next call. It reduces the follow-up time because maybe you can template out certain follow-up notes or homework to send to your clients to do so that they can implement and make progress. It is just amazing what the asset of having a framework within your business does for you on a personal level, for the effectiveness of your coaching, and for your business in general and the success of your business. So having a framework is key to almost creating more capacity for yourself and seeing how realistic and how sustainable even just offering one-on-one coaching only really is in your business. It's also extremely foundational and fundamental to being able to scale your business beyond one-on-one coaching if that's a desire that you have. So keep that in mind. And if you want to build your own framework and you're not really sure where to start, wanderwealthy.com slash framework. The coaching framework builder is literally meant for this. And it was built because I want more coaches to see how effective it can be to actually have a program in place and not just effective as a business strategy, but also effective when it comes to working with your clients and getting them real results. So wonderwealthy.com slash framework, having a framework is going to make managing more clients so much easier and possible for you. Okay, the last piece of this puzzle for managing more clients in your growing money coaching business is to have a scaling strategy. So this is kind of that next step, right? The framework, you really need that as a foundation so that it makes it easier for you to scale up. And the framework will, you know, essentially represents a curriculum. And then what you're able to do is take that curriculum, take that framework, And put it into a well-packaged program. And all of that allows for your scaling strategy to be possible. Now, I just mentioned that you can absolutely have a thriving, sustainable, and very lucrative business in coaching just offering one-on-one. But when you have your framework and your program, it does give you then the opportunity to scale up effectively from there into something like group coaching, if that's what you want to do, or taking your framework and parts of your program and the packaging of it and pulling it out into something like an evergreen, self-paced DIY course, and then ultimately developing your very own product suite of maybe different courses that make up your framework and allow that transformation to happen, but in a little bit more of an a la carte way if that's what your clients are craving. So there's really a lot of beauty that happens when you spend the time to create that initial framework and then have a scaling strategy so that you can manage more clients and see that these next steps are possible. So again, 
with this last tip, I don't want you to trip over the start line or put the cart before the horse before, you know, it really makes sense. It never makes sense to put the cart before the horse, I suppose. Um, Because, you know, maybe you maybe you are coaching and maybe you are getting more clients and you're just wondering, how can I much more effectively handle these? And in that case, go and make sure that you're abiding by the initial four tips that I've provided for you. Setting those boundaries and expectations up front, getting your CRM system set up, scheduling everything out in your calendar, especially those client coaching sessions, and having your framework and program in place. From there, once you get that and then you're still feeling capped out or you're just feeling really excited and open to scaling into the next level of group coaching or evergreen course or product suite, then you know that you've already set those foundations in place and you can understand the scaling strategy from there. This is another thing that I cover inside of the Coaching Framework Builder, how the money coaching business model works and what the different phases or stages of scaling your business look like and ultimately how that is done. So again, if you want to learn more about that and then get these foundational elements of creating a framework and putting it into a well-packaged program in place, then head to wanderwealthy.com slash framework. So that's it. Okay. Set those expectations, have the CRM, schedule everything out in a calendar, have a framework, and have a scaling strategy. And that is how you manage more clients in your growing money coaching business. And how exciting is that? That it is possible to have this thriving, expansive, lucrative, impact-driven, and results-oriented money coaching, financial coaching, wealth coaching business in this world and know that, you know, there almost is no cap because you can really handle far more than you believe you can. So don't trip over the start line, right? Know that there's solutions out there. The more clients you get, the actual easier it gets. And if you're stopping before you're allowing yourself to get started, hopefully listening to this has helped you just overcome that and say, all right, I'm just going to prove myself wrong. I'm going to prove myself, prove to myself that it is possible to maybe reach my financial goals or reach my business goals or reach my impact goals through just doing it and getting started and then making sure that I do the just-in-time learning and put some of these systems and processes in place to make it even easier on myself and more possible. So to get the framework and start building your own, go to wanderwealthy.com slash framework. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I am so stoked to be creating these next few episodes because we have some good ones lined up for you here. And I hope to see you in one of the Wander Wealthy programs in the next few weeks or months while I go off on maternity leave. Big things happening, but I'll still be here to support you. And this podcast will not be going anywhere in terms of the episodes that we've already uploaded. So make sure you go back and listen to those and get anything and everything that you need from this archive of support that I've been creating over the past few years. And with that, until next week, I hope you wander wealthy.